All right, guys. Well, it might not be a spectacularly gorgeous, but it just turned out to be a fine, a fine autumn day here in the collapse of everything here at uh, Bugs in a Jar Farm, where uh, it is Tuesday. It is October first. We have made it to October today, and I have been. Uh, out here working on my levee working on the levee that i pretty much built with uh, uh my aching back so uh i'm sitting here looking at the fall of uh 2024 uh shape of things so what I what, what you're looking at here is what I have been doing for uh, well five summers now I have spent five summers uh, and probably ten thousand uh, dollars building this uh, flood diversion system uh, this beat up old house which there never was supposed to be a house here but uh <laughs> what they call the house down here it is flooded we think five times and so i am literally trying to train a creek to go this way and i've done a pretty good job i honestly believe that this house would have flooded since I bought it five years ago and so I have created this big system of, uh, of levees and I guess you could call it three or four ponds uh, depending on your definition of uh, I am walking down my levee now depending on your definition of pond but all of this, I have, uh, I have gotten carved out. That's my island with the tomatoes on it. And then I have the main uh, pond here, which catches the floodwaters. And then they head back down that way and rejoin the creek. So in a flood, my, this little house down here, what's, <laughs> what, what's left of it down here is literally on an island. I am literally have created putting this house on an island. Uh, just kidding myself that uh, that what I'm doing, you know, when the when anything remotely like what hit it, what hit North Carolina this week were to come here, it would be an absolute joke. But as I say, I I honestly believe that uh, what I have done here with the uh, with the flood control system has has worked and I do think that I have uh, saved the house this is the hummingbird tiny house and my guess is this one very well might have washed come here little dog uh, the hummingbird house this is actually a converted old tool shed that used to sit where that bush straight ahead is and uh it was a pretty much a flooded out old tool shed uh so it's actually been through the flood and <laughs> i turned that flooded out old tool shed into a tiny house but uh you know, so I give myself mixed reviews for my five years of work and uh, my my five years of working on the levee. 
and the thousands of dollars I've spent. So what, what I'm figuring is I have given myself padding for maybe three extra inches of rain in a 24-hour period. That, you follow me, that if the house had flooded before at X amount of, of rain, I might have... I might have given myself three inches of rain over a 24-hour period is what I have bought for my hard work and my, and my money. Uh, but good Lord, guys, uh, I, I have to admit uh, that, that shit uh, in, in North Carolina, uh, I've, been, I've been trying to keep my mouth shut and, uh, you know, my niece, she lives in Asheville, and her parents live <laughs> live in Fort Myers. My brother and sister-in-law, for the second time in two years, have had their house flooded out uh, by hurricanes in Fort Myers. And uh, it sounds like they're just selling. They're, 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 they're saying, fuck this. They're 80 years old, and they cannot do this again so uh they're, they're they're just selling to the highest bidder and getting their uh asses to high ground while they still can and and and, and my guess is one of the places that they were thinking uh, of going to was moving to be near their daughter my niece uh in Asheville, north carolina uh which until what uh, four days ago was considered to be uh, one of the main climate havens, climate refuges, climate havens. You know all of these lists that doomers look at when deciding uh, where to move. Uh, and 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 now my niece. Uh, I mean, I honestly do not know. I mean, it's not like I'm close to my niece. I honestly do not know. To, to the, I assume I would know if she were dead. But beyond that, I, I honestly do not know what uh, my niece is dealing with in Asheville, North Carolina today uh, while her 80-year-old parents uh, are homeless again in, in Fort Myers. And, uh, so, but, good, I, I, I mean, it's just, I, I'm sure you've seen those videos from Lake Lure, L-U-R-E, uh, in Chimney Rock, uh, North Carolina, which is, I guess, about 30 miles from Asheville. My God, I, I, I mean, I don't care how much of a doomer you are, uh, you look at that video of, well, the former Chimney Rock, uh, North Carolina, in, in those videos of, of, of Asheville, and the, the, the very concept of a climate haven uh, it, it is out the window, and the Finger Lakes of New York always rate real high. Now, I, you know, I actually, where, where I live, is very similar to the topography around Asheville. <clears throat> you know, that this where I, I am filming this rant from is along a creek in a narrow valley between steep hillsides. Well, no, no shit, Sherlock. Uh, what do you think is going to happen now? The house that sat here for 50 years that burned down in 1947 is perfectly safe uh, fr from ever flooding. So I, I do have the, you, you know, the quote option of, uh, of rebuilding up there uh, where the house is supposed to be. This was actually the barn down here. There was never supposed to be a house built. Uh, down here. Uh, it just happened that way, such as the way of clueless morons. 
but uh, it, it, it not, not everybody who lives in this kind of topography in, a, in the century of climate chaos uh, even has the, you know, the backup option that, that I have. Uh, I, I mean, there's, good Lord, how many people are completely fucked. And, and, and it just begs the question, how many people moved to Asheville, North Carolina, or, uh, or in North Carolina in general, thinking they were going to a climate haven or a climate refuge? Pull your head out of your ass. Uh... You know, the, the, the sick, twisted irony, and I'm not surprised, so I get up this morning, I, I, I'm thinking about this, you know, I'm thinking about this, I don't know if if you haven't watched uh, Sandy Shellis' show on Environmental Coffee House from Friday night, where she had uh, Antonio Reed on the show, who lives there, uh, he lives in, I think he lives in Boone, and I guess he escaped the, the you, you, you know, by uh, the skin of his teeth. This the absolute destruction. So uh, you know, I've already been thinking along these lines, and I wake up to find three articles uh, on the mainstream media talking about this very, very subject that uh, you you can if, if you're if you're thinking that you're going to escape climate chaos by moving to one of these climate havens, pull your head out of your ass. Here is good old ABC News. Asheville tragedy shows there are no climate change safe havens. Asheville, North Carolina has been called a potential safe haven for climate refugees by real estate researchers, praised for its temperate mountain weather, distance far from the coast, experiencing less extreme heat and fewer wildfires. The city of around 95,000 people was believed markings of a place where those escaping the harsh impacts of the climate crisis could go for safety. Um, certainly there are locations that are going to be able to withstand some climate impacts more than others, according to Dave Reedmiller, director of the Gulf of Maine Research Institute's Climate Center. However, the fatal floods and landslides seen after Helene ripped through Buncombe County, which encompasses Asheville, highlights that, quote, no place is truly untouched by climate change anywhere in the world, close quote, said Reed Miller. Um, As extreme weather worsens amid global heating, the crisis is displacing people not just in the U.S., but around the world. Um, because of this, Antonia Sebastian, a professor at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill's Department of Earth, Marine, and Environmental Sciences, does not believe in climate havens. The designation of a, quote, climate haven has been denounced by climate experts who told ABC News that it's not only a widely accepted or official term and that the criteria is unclear, quoting Professor Sebastian, climate change is sort of a pervasive issue that is going to affect communities all over the world, not equally but definitely it will impact everyone, everywhere, in some way. Do you think so? Um, uh, 
despite Asheville's status as a climate resilient city, Amber Weaver, <laughs> this poor woman, her job title is sustainability officer for Asheville, North uh, Carolina, announced earlier this year that her city was in the process of developing a resilience assessment to adapt to the growing list of major climate related dangers. Uh, Reed Miller urges cities nationwide to invest in climate change mitigation and preparedness, uh, adding that the cost of climate change in both damages and human life will continue to add up unless action is taken. Do you think so? You pay for climate readiness now or Mother Nature is going to charge you later with interest. Yes. Uh, do you think so? Well, uh, I'm doing what I can here at Bugs in a Jar Farm out there with my shovel and my rake for three hours a day. Who the hell I am kidding. So how is the Guardian weighing in on this? Nowhere is safe. Shattered Asheville shows stunning reach of climate crisis. Nestled in the bucolic Blue Ridge Mountains of Western North Carolina and far from any coast, Asheville was touted as a climate haven from extreme weather. Now the historic city has been devastated and cut off by Hurricane Helene's catastrophic floodwaters in a stunning display of the climate crisis unlimited reach in the United States. Uh, yep. Uh, Helene mangled places in multiple states that have never seen such impacts, obliterating small towns such as Chimney Rock they're talking about, hurling trees onto homes, unmooring houses that then floated in the flood water, plunging millions of people into power blackouts and turning major roads into rivers. Uh, good Lord, what is it? 30, 30 uh, people have been pulled out of the wreckage uh, around Asheville so far were 600 still missing. Mighty in that one of those 600 might even be my niece for uh, all I know. Uh, Asheville, a city of historic architecture where, re where new residents have flocked amid boasting by real estate agents of a place that offers a reprieve from crazy extreme weather. Now major highways into Asheville have been severed by flooding from surging rainfalls. It's mud caked in dis debris strewn city center, center turned into a place where access to cell phone reception, gasoline and food is scarce. Along with the roads, the water supply is expected to be affected for weeks. Uh, this is a climate campaigner. I'm not sure the definition of a climate campaigner. Uh, Anna Jane Joyner, a climate campaigner who grew up in the Asheville area uh, and still lives there. Several of her friends narrowly avoided being swept away by the flood water, quoting the climate campaigner from Asheville, quote, everyone thought this was a safe place, somewhere you could move with your kids for the long term, 
So this is just unimaginable. It is catastrophic. I never, ever considered the idea that Asheville would be wiped out. It was our backup plan to move there, so the irony is stark and scary, and it's hard for me to emotionally process. I have been working in the climate movement for 20 years and feel like I am now living in a movie I imagined in my head when I started. Nowhere is safe now. Close quote. Uh, anyway, uh, and who is this? Uh, this is a, this is North Carolina state climatologist Kathy Dello said it would take months or even years for communities particularly in the poorer, more rural areas of the state, to recover. Quote, I don't know where you run to escape climate change. Everywhere has some sort of risk. It's really been quite rattling to see these places which you love be devastated, knowing they have been changed forever. We cannot just rebuild like before. Uh, this is probably my niece. Even those in Asheville who are physically safe are generally without power, water, or internet and cell phone connectivity. The destruction casts a shadow over the climate change haven reputation of Asheville, much like how Vermont's apparent distance from the climate crisis has been rethought in the wake of recent floods, but it probably will not defy a broader trend where Americans are still flocking to some of the places most at risk from heat waves, storms, and other climate impacts due to the ready availability of housing and jobs. This is Jesse Keenan, an expert in climate adaptation at Tulane University. Quote, this flood, you know, the one in Asheville, will likely accelerate development, you know, new development. Some people will not be inclined to or unable to rebuild and their properties will be bought up by wealthy people who can afford to build private infrastructure such as my ten thousand dollar levy here uh, and buildings that have the engineering resilience to withstand floods. There is truly no safe place, said Keenan, who previously listed Asheville as one of the better places to move amid the climate crisis acknowledged, but the city will, quote, see a post-disaster boom, he said. This is a cycle that has happened over and over again in America. Yep, and I agree with the uh, band 100%. One more here from the Daily Beast. Hurricane Helene turned city touted as climate haven into apocalyptic disaster zone. An area touted as a climate haven that would be safe from the adverse effects of global warming is among the most devastated by Hurricane Helene. The city of Asheville has consistently topped list of preferred destinations 
for Americans looking to pack up and move to a location relatively insulated from the adverse in impacts of global warming. Now, however, the mountain city is the site of biblical devastation, said one local emergency service officials. Um, talking about tourists who were stranded in mountain vacation rentals were among the trapped and panicked and hundreds if not thousands of residents saw their homes inundated or washed away by the floodwaters. It is a worst case scenario that did not previously seem possible to most in the Carolinas. And now Asheville's River Arts District is inundated. The state has ordered that all roads in western North Carolina be closed with only emergency vehicles being legally permitted. Rescue missions are being carried out by private citizens with helicopters. At Asheville resident Gregory Harrison says it has been an incredibly apocalyptic weekend for all of us here. Uh, AccuWeather is now claiming Helene will cost around $150 billion. The destruction calls into question the expertise of real estate gurus who sold Asheville as a place to escape extreme weather events. Asheville ranked number two in the United States in the U.S. earlier this year uh, for the highest planned move-in, move-out ratio. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, the city's local paper published an article last summer detailing why Asheville came in third on a list of the top 12 U.S. cities most likely to see, receive a population boom from climate migration. Other headlines published in recent years include Come Hell or High Water, Asheville is a climate winner. There you go. Well, I think they got the hell and the high water. Uh, here is Climate Haven. More people moving to Asheville to escape more severe climate change. And maybe my favorite, Western North Carolina Climate Refuge. <laughs> oh, I guess all you can do is laugh. Uh, but anyway, for any any of you who have not seen, let me uh, let me find this video of uh, this is this lake uh, lake lure. Uh, I guess we're thirty. 30 miles from uh, from uh, Asheville here. So this is, uh, well, what used to be the town of Chimney Rock, uh, North Carolina, is literally in the lake, washed into the lake. I, I, I mean, look at this, guys. I mean, what, what, what the fuck are they going to do with this? Th this, this is an entire town. And uh, I, I'm guessing that some of those 600 missing people uh, in, in, around Asheville and Western North Carolina, you can be sure that some of those 600 unaccounted for people 
are uh, are lying in there. Good God. Anyway, so much for your uh, climate haven. Ugh. But here I sit, hoping that the levee holds. When the levee fails, Mama, I can kiss my flowers goodbye. So I'm going to get out there and uh, enjoy my levee while I still can. Bye, guys.